Hey friends, in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to get your first commercial project making music for a big brand. And why is this important? First of all, this is important because I believe musicians today have to learn how to stop trying to sell their singles to people who are streaming them for free. And you got to start learning how to sell your musical skills to places that need original music and that are willing and able to pay for it. Those places are brands. Who am I to teach you this stuff? Well, I've been doing this for 15 years, folks, as a music producer who's done music for close to a thousand campaigns for big brands like Nike, Google, Toyota, BMW, Sony, Heineken, Carlsberg, way too many others to mention. So I'm not one of those internet dudes that's gonna teach you something that they're not doing themselves. All right, so how to get your first gig in the business. Let me jump over to my whiteboard of timeless wisdom and let me lay down some chicken scratch here that's hopefully going to enlighten you and help you to get your first job in the biz. The first thing you gotta know is how the business works. And we covered that in a vi different video, the process and the people. You have to understand the big picture. So I invite you to check out that video. We're gonna link it somewhere here. The first thing I wanna cover is the mistakes that musicians make in trying to bring break into this business. And I know these firsthand because I've made these mistakes when I was breaking in. And I also know them secondhand in a way because I have musicians emailing me every single day talking about how they want to break into this business. But I'm basically ignoring a lot of these emails just because I can see that the way the email was written, the way the music is presented and the way the person presents themselves, they don't make them a great candidate for the business. So that's very unfortunate. And I want you to be aware of these mis mistakes so you don't make them in your outreach process. Okay, so the number one mistake is that you don't know the business, okay? You haven't taken the time to research the business, to look at uh, websites of music production companies that specialize in making music for brands. You haven't taken the time to understand what kind of music is featured in a lot of the commercials or content that brands are doing. And this shows me that maybe you heard of making music for brands as a career path and you got all excited about it and you impulsively started writing a bunch of emails, putting a bunch of links in your email and sending it to a bunch of people, but you're not very serious about it. Now, folks, this is a business where a lot of musicians are actually making a full-time living. They're feeding their families. This is a serious business where millions of dollars are spent on music every single year. So if you're really serious about this, I want you to research, get a feeling for our business so that you understand the lingo, you understand the kind of music that's appearing on um, different music production company websites. Here's the assignment. We're actually interviewing in our pro group, the um, executive producer, Evelyn Brown from Yassian. This is what we do in our academy. We want you to talk to the insiders. We want you to understand how things are really happening in our business and not just speculation or theory. So you go to all these different production company websites of, mus of music production companies that specialize making music for brands and you take a look. All right, what's going on on their reel? Here's their featured work. Let me see what they're doing, what kind of music they're featuring and that will give me an idea of how I need to present myself. All right, here's my company website. I invite you to do research. Another thing that you can do that's going to be very helpful for you is go to adsoftheworld.com and this is where a lot of work, a lot of different brand campaigns are presented. Here you're going to get a really good feeling for what kind of music appears in different ads and then you're going to listen to your own music and you're going to figure out where is that intersection point, which one of your tracks or which one of your musical styles is the best candidate. And then you're gonna to put together your reel and you're gonna reach out to the business. And then when I listen to your reel, I'm gonna be like, okay, this person obviously understands what kind of music, what kind of sound we're looking for. So do your research. Number two mistake that musicians make is they focus on themselves. So like I said, they find out about making music for brands as a potentially lucrative career path. In all of their excitement, they start drafting these long emails that read more like a book. You tell me your entire history of all the bands you've ever been in. You tell me your fascination with wind instruments from the age of two. You send me 18 SoundCloud links. This shows me that you're very focused on yourself. This is something that amateurs do, unfortunately. You're not professionally minded. You're still focused on self. Your music is very close to you. You talk about heart, you talk about passion. You gotta understand that in our business, our business can be a little bit heartless. They don't care about your dreams. They don't care about your passions. All they care about is solving, creating, problems. That's all we got to do, solve creative problems. So instead of presenting yourself to me as somebody who talks about how important music is to you, how much you want to make music for a living, 
Instead, what you need to do is focus on your audience, focus on the client. And that is going to change the way you write your email, the way you present yourself. You're going to start thinking about how to position yourself so that I'm most likely to reply. If you think about this, you wouldn't want someone to come up to you and start telling you their life story before you even get a chance to shake their hand and somebody that talks about themselves all the time. You don't react positively to, to folks like this. So why do you think people in our industry who are busy and we have to understand this before we reach out to the business music production uh, music producers in our business are very busy people they're often stressed so the last thing they want is another long email that they have to check out with 18 links what they're looking for though is a way that they can provide an edge as a music producer to their clients. So they're always looking for talented musicians. They're always looking for somebody who's going to be able to deliver a distinct sound. But if you present yourself the wrong way because you're focused on the self, you're going to uh, basically sabotage your chances of breaking in. Let's picture a happy ending and then reverse engineer it. Okay. And I'm going to go very quick here because I want you to start learning how to think as a professional and not just giving you quick steps or tips or secrets. There is no secrets, folks. If you want to do something well, picture a happy ending and then work backwards. So our happy ending in our case is wow. It's a music produ producer at a music production company going, hey, I have to get in touch with this person. What I'm hearing here is distinct, number one. Okay, I just misspelled that word, distinct. And it's something that I can picture in a commercial. So let's say ad friendly. And if you do your research, you're going to realize that just because the music is in a commercial doesn't mean that it has to be cheesy. It doesn't mean that it has to be generic. And I hear a lot of very generic music that people present to me thinking that it's going to appeal to me for the world of commercials. Well, if you take a look at my website, you will see that I don't have anything generic in my reel. I'm looking for world-class songs that sound like they've been written by world-class artists. I'm looking for world-class compositions that sound like they could be in a major Hollywood film. I'm not looking for mediocre work. I'm not looking for generic work. So that's the reaction that we want from a music producer. We want them to notice your music and go, wow, this is very interesting. I want to keep this person on my radar. Now, what's going to lead them there? What's going to lead them there to this wow moment is your reel. Your reel is going to get their attention in the first five seconds and it's going to keep their attention for no more than two minutes. You don't want to make your reel any longer than two minutes. Because if I see an audio file that is longer than two minutes, I automatically go, mm, you know what? I don't have time for this right now. I'm going to set it aside. Maybe I'll get back to it. So make sure your reel is two minutes. That way, when somebody looks at it, just the optics of the thing, they will go, huh, okay, yeah, all right, let's 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 see what this person has. And keep in mind that we do not listen to your 40 minute composition or 14 or even five. We don't, we just don't have the time and we don't need to. We have been trained to listen to music very quickly. So it takes us a few seconds to find out, okay, does this person know how to mix? They know how to master. They know how to make their music jump out of the speaker, great. How is their composition? Is it evolving? Is it painting a narrative? It's very important, folks. I know that as a musician, you might want to show, you know, your latest um, musical productions that basically take like a minute or two or three minutes to evolve. But in the commercial, you have 30 seconds to tell the story. And usually the commercial music structure is like a question. This is a question mark. So like what's happening? So that is, that's a kind of an intro. Then the show starts and it's what we call it in our masterclass, the first gear. So we kind of get going, you kind of introduce the beat or whatever. Then we have always some kind of a ramp, like a build up, and then we have like the climax, okay? And it happens in every single commercial, you watch this structure, and then usually the climax kind of goes down to like a peaceful ending, okay? So you're like, oh, what I just listened to is awesome. But it's always this narrative. It's always this progression. So the best thing you can do in your reel is show me your ability to be able to twist and turn your music. So very quickly go from a beatless chord progression that's very cinematic into a buildup and into a payoff. Okay, because that will show me, okay, you can very quickly shape your music into a narrative in a very short time frame. Okay, so what's going to lead us to your reel? Well, the fact that it's probably going to be housed on your website. Why I recommend that musicians use websites instead of, let's say, SoundCloud links to host the reel. Your website is going to tell me who you are. It's going to reveal your personality. This is very important in our business. Big brands do not search in music banks for music. 
okay? This is an industry of relationships where agencies, creative directors, uh, broadcast producers choose certain music producers to work with at music production companies. And in these music producers, people like me, I choose certain composers to work with, not just based on their musical ability, but also based on their sensibility. And how I choose these folks, I'm gonna talk about this in a separate video because I believe there are three essential personality traits or things you need as a freelance musician in order to maximize your chances of breaking into the business, but we'll cover that in a separate video. The thing about the website is that it shows me your personality, the, the colors you like, the photograph, it's very important. I see a lot of websites where I go onto your website and then there's like a guitar amp or a microphone there on the front page. I don't care about your gear. It's not about the gear. It's about the goosebumps. It's about who are you? And do I want to entrust this creative problem that I have to solve for my client with you? So your website will allow me to get to know you a little bit better. And I think that's very important in building a relationship. So I always recommend that people have a website. Now, what's going to bring me to that website? Well, your email. A simple email is what's going to hopefully get me to click. So I go to your website, then I check out your reel, and then hopefully I have a wow moment. There are three C's that I always talk about in a masterclass. All of my students are familiar with this, and that is clear, crisp, and compelling. These three C's are going to be your compass. This is a compass. They're going to be your compass for everything that you're doing. It's gonna be like your way of verifying everything that you do. I want your emails to be clear, crisp, and compelling. I want your website to be clear, crisp, and compelling. I want your reel to be clear, crisp, and compelling. Because guess what? If all of these things, you can check the three C's under each of these things, it's most likely that you're gonna build a wow moment for your audience. Let me explain these three C's for you very quickly. When I check my email in the morning, I'm looking for emergencies. We're working under tight deadlines. There's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure to get these campaigns finished. So when I see an email from a stranger and I'm just scanning my email inbox and it looks like this, guess what? I'm going to set it aside. Not a priority right now. This is not one of the projects that I'm working on. I don't have to read this email. But when I'm scanning my email inbox and I see an email from a name I don't recognize and it looks like this, guess what? Before I've had a chance to think about it, I've already read it. And maybe in my mechanical robotic email checking mode that I'm in, when I see a link, I click it, right? And this link takes me to a website. Now, if this website is clear, crisp, and compelling, guess what? It's going to lead my attention. It's going to make me do certain things. So if your website is clear, that means it's not cluttered. It's very simple. There's a headline. There's your picture to get across your personality. And right away here, I have a play button. Guess what? What I'm probably going to do when I see your smile and go, this looks like a nice person. I'm going to click your reel. And if your reel catches my attention in the first five seconds and then keeps it for two minutes, it's probably going to lead me to go, wow, I need to keep that person on my radar. So clear, clear crisp and compelling means clear. You keep your stuff very uncluttered very simple. It's very easy to navigate. It's very easy to understand. You express yourself not in run-on sentences, but in very short, crisp, clear sentences. Okay? Crisp means that it's not only concrete, it's very simple, but it's also like it has like a bit of pepper to it. Okay? Everything you do is short, but impactful. Like great music, right? Great music is also about clear, crisp, compelling production, right? And finally, compelling means that you're actually moving me as a human. So in your emails, you're not saying, hello, my name is uh, Tommy Z and uh, my biggest passion is making music and hopefully we can. Yawn, please. If you can be an artist in the studio, be an artist in your emails. Everything is a canvas if you want it to be. Write me uh, something that's going to make me smile. Write me something that's going to be interesting. All right. Your website, compelling, please. Give me some emotion. Make me smile. Okay. Same with your reel. Make it compelling. A lot of musicians think that we're, because we're talking about making music for brands, the music has to be boring or generic. Guys, a guitar, a tambourine, and drums is not going to cut it anymore. Maybe it cut it in 2001, but today it's not going to cut it. We have sophisticated tools. Everyone has access to them. Now your job is to create magic. 
It's not about the gear. It's about what comes out of the speakers and how it makes people feel. And believe me, the biggest brands in the world, and all you got to do is check out the reels of the best music production companies in the business. They are not using generic music. They're using world-class music that's going to give you goosebumps, all right? So this is what you got to do. I hope that this has been a clear, crisp, and compelling exposition of what you need to do to get your first shot in the business. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, consider subscribing. If you know musicians who are struggling to make a living with music and need to find a different way, please share this video with them. If you have any questions about my chicken scratch, please put it in the comments below. My name is Tommy Z. This is Anthem and I'll see you in the next video.